Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If we can have a roll call, please. Chairperson Zinnick. Here. Vice Chairperson um, Cummins requested to be excused. Member, I'm sorry, Van Portfleet. Present. Member Lamb. Here. Member Laurent. Here. Member um, Sable and Smith requested to be excused. Member Reard. Here. Member Young. Here. We have a quorum. All right, thank you. Uh, next will be item four, approval of agenda. Um, but we do have an addition to the agenda, uh, which will be 8C. And this is a proposed ordinance number 26.109, text amendments to the zoning ordinance, section 20 of violations and penalties. Do have a motion to approve the agenda? Move to approve with addition. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Uh, item five, approval of the minutes from the December 6, 2021 meeting. Any motion? I motion to approve the uh, minutes from the December 6th meeting. Second. Moved and second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carries. Item six is public comments on non-agenda items. Uh, and we have, Sue, would you like to read? Yes, uh, give me one second. Our, I have too many papers here. Thank you. Um, we, had a, we had three public comments submitted by uh, Mr. Corey Johnston and asked that they be read into the minutes. Um, this first one is under public comment. It says the agenda states public comments for non-agenda items only. While I am new to Lake Orion and the Lake Orion government po policies, I have attended a few meetings and there is generally not a call or designation designated opportunity to comment on agenda items. Are public comments on the agenda items allowed on it? And if so, how would and when is that done? And we will take care of uh, emailing back to Mr. Uh, Johnston how our meetings operate and that uh, items on the agenda are always open for public comment. So these are just for things that come up or announcements people want to make or that type of thing. Okay. Uh, thank you. And is there any other public comment for non-agenda items for today's meeting? All right. That said, we'll move on to old business. Uh, this is item A, which is the 141 West Elizabeth Street Apartments uh, preliminary PUD updated plan. Uh, Sue, also you have uh, uh, a statement on this? Okay, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Yeah, I need you to uh, let me recuse myself from this. Okay, do we need a motion for uh, commissioners? Recusal? You. Yes. Yeah. Motion for that. Yeah. So moved. Uh, okay. Support. You... Moved and supported. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Uh, back to our statement, uh, Sue, on 7A. Is that yours? All right. This is a comment regarding the. 141 West Elizabeth Street Apartments, also from Corey Johnston. There was a public hearing on this on December 6, 2021, with no action taken or recommendations from the commission. From the available zoning map, the property being considered is zoned RM multiple family residential, but the project 
proposed appears to have no relationship to the surrounding residential properties. The proposed plan has the site almost completely paved over. There is no screening or landscaping between adjacent properties, and the appearance is more of commercial office than that of residential housing due to the flat and bland facade. I see no overall improvements to the area and community other than a possible increased tax base, but that would be provided by almost any construction. Since this is a PUD, I ask the Commission consider the greater good of the community in their deliberation and recommendation as this, this can be done better and in a manner more compatible with the surrounding properties and master plan. Corey Johnston. All right, thank you. So I see that there was correspondence to our planner, McKenna. Was there a response from McKenna? No. No? The discussion from the board, um, we had public hearing. No, uh, public hearing. We had some conditions. The, the, yes. Chairman, the applicant did submit revised plans, and there was an additional sheet provided today. Yes. Some of which included. Um, well, he had yeah, but this revised this plan for the front north elevation, uh -huh. and also on page three sure. in your packet, he. Uh, amended the plan in writing to show a walkway, which I'm sure his architect can speak to that. So I wanted to make that aware of that, but I also, uh, the applicant did provide um, some pictures of the type of material that he'll show us shortly on what he's proposing for this development as well. So that's the, just additional information that came in regarding this particular project. Um, Okay, that, I, I'm sorry, because the pictures you just had oh, up there. you go back to it? Yeah, I hadn't seen. So that's what I've seen, that facade. Yeah. And there was other photos? I just glanced up, I'm sure. sorry. Yeah, that. So are they saying it's going to look like that or like the other? I'm sorry? I, are they saying it's going to look like this? Did they well, revise they, this? Well, they I submitted them, and I assume this is ah. the type of product they're going to be proposing. Okay. Um, so, so I just want to let you know what additional information we got today. That's all. Okay. Commissioner Van Portfleet. Yeah. I'm, I'm just curious as to what we're to do this evening. Is it just discuss the plans and say we'd like to have a, a different look or uh, what's the applicant looking for as far as um, I've got a few things on the plans. I don't think the plans are ready yet. Uh, I've looked them over and there's some discrepancies, but um, I'm not sure what the action is this evening on this item. We have no review letter from McKenna. What would you say, Mr. Young? Well, in the packet on page 11 is a letter from Tim Brodowski, the uh, owner of the, the architect firm, and if he could act, update us where he's at, because there are a lot of items that were uncertain. And if you're in a position to discuss that this evening, because I'm, you know, the goal is to get this considered for a recommendation to council, but there's a lot of issues, unknowns at this point that we need to have clarified. Hi, good evening, sure. uh, Timothy Brodowski, uh, construction by design, the uh, architect of uh, record for the, uh, the reards and the uh, proposed development. Um, I had uh, assembled a letter following the um, uh, previous planning commission meeting on the 6th um, that just addressed the comments from, uh, from McKenna. Um, if you, and, and I will preface some of the, the conflicts in the plans because I, honestly after that meeting I realized it wasn't formal, it wasn't uh, uh, formally approved. Um, yet we, we continued with, with developing the plans further to obviously get towards more of a construction uh, set of documents uh, rather than kind of the, the set of plans submitted for planning commission approval. So um, 
I do realize there were some uh, some items that had gotten updated, and quite honestly, I didn't realize we were coming before you again uh, in this manner. So, an error on my part. I apologize for that. So, um, but if we'd like to to review the letters from, uh, or excuse me, review the items from McKenna to discuss them further, and uh, hopefully get closer to approval, that be that'd be great. Is that acceptable? Is that good on with the commissioners? Yeah. All right. Please. Fantastic. Uh, letter dated uh, December 28th. I uh, realized it was <clears throat> probably later than uh, Ms. Haw would have liked to receive, but um, just walking through the items that uh, were in her most recent uh, review letter dated December 3rd. Um, the first point is about the um, internal configuration of the living areas of the, uh, the two bedroom units that do not uh, uh, allow direct natural sunlight. Uh, just based on the uh, the layout of the building, we struggled for a bit with, uh, with an appropriate layout. Obviously, the, the bedrooms need to uh, uh, be situated on the uh, exterior wall to allow for egress requirements. Uh, our solution to that was, was um, larger uh, windows for, uh, for the entire building. Um, the previous was a uh, three foot uh, by five foot single hung or double hung window that uh, uh, has now been updated or upsized, uh, if you would, to a uh, five foot by five foot uh, sliding glass window. Um, and we have uh, also eliminated uh, uh, the, the man door and, and uh, window um, uh, openings at the, uh, at the balcony and replaced those with uh, larger sliding glass doors similar to a, a patio door wall or something of that nature. <clears throat> Uh, the comment on uh, the green space requirements along Elizabeth Street. Um, we have uh, uh, indicated on the preliminary plans the ground cover that meets the, the uh, uh, ordinance, I feel. And um, you know, if there's additional items that are required that I think uh, would benefit the, the development and the community, we're, we're certainly open to that. <clears throat> the traffic circulation noted on the plans that has been revised and I think is a non-issue. Uh, additional parking at the rear of the building was brought up, and the, uh, I'm assuming most of you are, are familiar with the site, um, but the grade at the back of the property drops off significantly. Um, it's, it would be a definite challenge to um, add that area for uh, parking, even when we, uh, uh, again, meet the ordinance of the two spaces per, uh, per unit. The, uh, there was a note about the lighting placement and scale. Uh, again, I think that would all be uh, further developed, developed and refined to be a more appropriate uh, residential style uh, fixture. There is a, a, um, a section essentially through the, um, uh, through the property from the uh, south to the north that uh, depicts the, the, um, the site lighting. And uh, I do believe there was, there was one, uh, some of the site lighting on the, on the poles was a bit out of scale, but the, uh, uh, that would all be adjusted, obviously, according to uh, the necessary photometrics and, and to, um, uh, again, meet with the ordinance. There was a, uh, a comment about relocating the dumpster enclosure, which we've addressed. Um, we, that has uh, since shifted over to the west side of the property, furthest uh, away from the existing uh, single-family home to the, uh, to the east. Uh, another comment regarding parking and uh, uh, parking spaces uh, throughout the development have, have been uh, designed uh, to meet the, the uh, village ordinance. Uh, there, are, uh, there were also some comments regarding the, uh, the landscaping and some of the existing trees at the, at the site. Um, a majority of uh, uh, the trees along the perimeter, obviously the, the, uh, the east, west, and south uh, property lines would be uh, kept in place. The, uh, there was a comment about box, um, black walnuts, excuse me, that uh, um, again, we will uh, evaluate those and, and, and keep as, uh, as many of those as possible. There's also a note about a box elder tree that uh, was called off on the plans as an invasive species, and I think we would take the necessary steps to, uh, to remove that. 
comment about the uh, facade, which uh, uh, Mr. Young touched on. Um, the uh, material that the Reards have um, um, focused on uh, up, up here is a company that I always butcher the, uh, the actual pronunciation of it, but uh, the Firestone building across the street at, uh, at the corner, basically a kitty corner from uh, Kroger, uh, offers a, a, a material that's um, almost like a paneling system, similar to a, a, a fiber cement material, which we have samples here if we'd like to bring them up and share them. Um, but again, a material that uh, I, I think would withstand the, um, uh, you know, elements and, and obviously be something that could be a low maintenance product. Um, we did speak to that the, the front facade along Elizabeth Street would be a, uh, a traditional brick uh, from, from grade to uh, the roof. The, um, the columns that you see on the, on the uh, uh, on the building itself would also be brick. Again, anything that would be uh, relatively close to grade, allow you know people to um, make contact with, would certainly be a, uh, a traditional masonry product. While everything uh, second story and above would be the uh, fiber cement siding paneling product that you see above you. There were uh, some additional recommendations in the letter. Um, one note regarding. Uh, the overall square footage, uh, again, the plans continue to be, de to be yeah, excuse me, to be developed. The um, um, uh, uh, main changes were within the corridor space, uh, reconfiguring the uh, the elevator, some of the uh, some of the other common area uh, elements that um, uh, that impacted the overall uh, layouts of the individual units. So obviously, we're, we're uh, set within the building envelope and, uh, you know, have constraints within, uh, within that and are, uh, are working with that. Uh, one other point that I forgot to mention on the, uh, on the facade material that you see uh, behind you, it is also a, a green building product um, and would obviously contribute to that uh, uh, element of the building. Uh, another note on the plan uh, review regarding the uh, uh, an error on one of the, the square footages for one of the units, unit 305. That was uh, an incorrect uh, note on my part, and that has been revised. Uh, we have added the, uh, the cardinal directions to all the exterior elevations, indicating north, south, east, and west. Uh, the, there's another point here on the, uh, the black walnut trees that I think I mixed up from, uh, from earlier, but um, again, those will all be closely evaluated and uh, um, in, uh, I believe there are some of them on the west side that would conflict with the parking area that we're proposing, so those would be uh, removed, but again, along the uh, east, west, and south property lines, those would uh, uh, remain. But again, I think majority of the, uh, the ones that are along the perimeter property line are all evergreens rather than uh, the walnuts. <clears throat> Uh, there was a comment about additional details on the, uh, the mailbox that we have at the, the main entry to the building. Uh, I think those would, would follow <laughs> in um, uh, subsequent drawing um, submissions. Um, typical mailbox setup for an apartment, I, I, I think, uh, uh, would suffice. And then the, a comment about the colored renderings that uh, uh, I believe you all had had seen a moment ago, um, incorporating again a brick facade along the uh, the north elevation or the Elizabeth Street elevation, um, and then a uh, the fiber cement uh, material along uh, all the other elevations. There's a request for a sidewalk at the main entry to the building. Um, we're evaluating that now, obviously, because um, a traditional sidewalk right there might. Um, uh, impact the uh, you know travel of a, a, a fire truck or emergency vehicle. Uh, we're contemplating shifting the front uh, wall of the uh, of the building in slightly to accommodate a sidewalk, uh, create an overhang that would offer a little bit more aesthetics for some depth perception to the building and and uh, just a little bit of a break in the uh, in the facade. 
There are, uh, there was a request for additional plantings along uh, the east side of the property to shield the existing single family residence, which there's no issue in doing that and incorporating that into the project. Uh, and I think that was it for the comments. <clears throat> you say you have the samples? Yes. The zone? Okay. I have them here, might as well show them to us, if you would. Yeah, I saw them earlier. This is the front? Uh, that would be the look of the front, essentially. The, I, again, traditional masonry product on the front elevation from grade to the roof. Um, and again, on the columns that support the building itself in the parking area. Um. <coughs> Solid. Good. So I noticed that you sent this right after Christmas. Yes. And I'm sure that, you know, with the time frame of this meeting, getting it on the agenda. Obviously, our planner hasn't had a chance sure. to go through everything. So I appreciate you going through Absolutely. each item. Um, I don't see us acting on this. Uh, Laura, I, I, how much time will this be for the next meeting? Would you be able to have a response back? Yes, um, although I have gone through these comments and in my opinion, they don't adequately, adequately address the comments that we provided on December 3rd. Okay. I think there's still, there's still some work to be done on this plan. Since we have, give me one second, please. Since we have the parties here, and I am one to try to move things along, is there anything that can be discussed tonight? And by the way, there was a public hearing back in December on this. Just curious, show of hands, of any public comments for this project? Okay. Um, so I know it was on social media, um, but this has been going on for 90 days, more than that. Um, and not that we don't wanna hear from the public, but we do wanna get this moving along. We don't wanna drag our feet. Um, so give us a minute and I'll, I'll acknowledge you. Um, so is there something we can do tonight to maybe cut through some of these so we get on the next agenda to make a action plan? I think, I think it would be helpful for the commission to go through these nine outstanding items and provide some further direction to the applicant. Okay. Um, I would give you my opinion on the nine. Um, I thought that it was good that you made some efforts to move forward. Out of the nine, items two says we will continue to evaluate, number two. Number four says we have evaluated the option for additional parking in rear and do not believe that will be suitable. Number five, the lighting placement and scale will be refined as the plans develop further. Number seven, per the current village ordinance, and it is unlikely that we will be able to construct. Number eight, the initial site plan developed by Fenn and Associates will be updated to include, will be updated. Number nine, we continue to develop the front elevation. And then any additional comments um, where it states this was a function of reconfiguring the layout of the corridor as a common space as well as a revised wall construction that we will likely be proceeding with. For me, it was a lot of maybe shoulda, quota. Okay. We're thinking about doing this. It was not, more than half of it wasn't definitive. And so I was really looking forward to the McKenna letter to do for the comparison. But if you were to just say, we won't, at least we know there's a line drawn, we won't build a back parking lot sure. or we were not going to, those type of things, because then we can deliberate them and say, oh, well, maybe, okay, all right, great. We're not gonna, we're not gonna deal with that and uh, we'll try to move past it. And then also on the second page, there's about middle way down, it says, details will be provided for the mailbox for the building in future drawing submissions. You mentioned that, sir, and I appreciate that. And then also we are working on a colored rendering for the building and hope to have it available for the next meeting, which we got. 
but it's still, it's not completely accurate, but at least it's a partial and it's partway there. I just think we need to have a little bit more uh, accuracy. Sure. Um, a little better dotting of the I's and crossing the T's and we could try to help. Uh, the only thing other than that that I'd like to mention that when I went through the plans, I saw some discrepancies and had a couple of concerns about um, hallway width and stuff like that. I saw yeah. that you had uh, some plans at a quarter inch scale and some at three sixteenths inch scale. Correct. What would be nice for me, because mm -hmm. I don't do this for a living, is if you're going to give us quarter inch scale because it's a blow up of the rooms, then give us um, uh, three eighths, which is a double three sixteenths. Okay. Because then I know it's a simple three sixteenths, one foot, three eighths, two foot. And that gives me my blow up instead of changing the scale. You follow me? I do. I think that would be helpful. And then I was wondering about the ADA. I asked Mr. Young about that today because mm -hmm. I don't think the ADA, and I'm not fully aware of all the provisions, which would be McKenna's um, consulting for us, but um, I didn't see any of those provisions in here. I, I believe it might be as simple as, is it like one apartment out of every 20 has to have ADA or? To the best of my knowledge, yes. I'm sorry? Yes, I believe to the best of my knowledge, yes. Yeah. So, so and I didn't capture that in here as well. So, might want to look at that as getting ahead of that game because we haven't gotten to that deep of a review, but I'm trying to look at what works for you, what might work for us. Got it. I'm not that concerned about the lighting issue that you folks had tried to work with. I've been in, if you look at it, most of these rooms have an exterior window. Mm -hmm. You know, they should certainly, the more important question would be is whether it works for the fire department or not, as far as ingress and egress. And um, that's my quick summary, if you will. Thank and, you. Uh, I, uh -huh. I, I'd like to just mention the same as our, our chair, Mr. Zenyuk, that uh, looking forward to try to move forward. I did have a couple of questions too. Um, on, on sheet A201, 201, you, which is the uh, north elevation, you had on a three foot, looked like some kind of like a knee stone wall. texture, a knee wall, but it doesn't show on the color version. I didn't know. That was when the, uh, uh, well, that, that still is accurate, if you would. The, um, uh, the rear of the building doesn't have the, the wall going all the way to the grade to uh, conceal the parking. So you would see that kind of inner core area um, for the stairwell, the exercise room, the common area, and things like that. Yeah, um, and I, I agree that that, uh, that partial culture stone wall or whatever it is, because uh, I'm looking for the aesthetic appeal. Mm -hmm. uh, east and west sides, I think they're, they got a lot of balconies and there's other things, but that very northern portion, the first thing you're going to see when you come down Elizabeth Street, um, it looks just like a box with some windows. Okay. And if there could be some work done there, that would be great. Uh, I had two other quick questions, really. On the exercise room, there's only one door. Is that, am I reading it right, or am I, no, there's two doors. The stairwell, I guess. Is that correct? Uh, correct. I believe there's only one door at the moment. So that doorway off the stairwell isn't accessible from the exercise room? Uh, correct. No, it's not. It's not? It's not. Oh. There's, a, there's a storage room in there that's consistent with the uh, oh. space. So you, you can have an exercise room with only one entrance? Yes. I think so at that size. safety standpoint or oh. actually, wow. Okay. And the other thing I was questioning was, have you thought about where and what type of signage you're looking at? For the building itself? On the site, where you're going to have any signage, name um, of the building or address or something, because that should be part of the plan too. We will review and incorporate something in there, but honestly, it hasn't come up. Any other comments? Commissioner Lane? Very good. Hi, guys. It's good to see you back here again. Sorry to say you haven't finished your plans yet. I wish right. you would hurry up and, and do that. We give you a good review. Um, I think all the comments that Ken made were appropriate. If you're just going to say no, we're not giving you any more parking, you're meeting the ordinance requirements of two 
you know, parking spaces per unit, which is what the ordinance says, and there aren't others here that are doing that. So, great. Just say no. I can and do We'll that. get it off the her list, and then we can move on. Uh, no. <laughs> exactly. The other item here is, so I just want to review this uh, density issue again. So, apparently, for some reason, um, I voted to, you know, approve this with the um, PUD 50% bonus. You have 20 units per acre. So the underlying zoning um, is 15 units of, per acre. So you're getting, a, you're getting a, a density bonus. With that being in mind, I'm a licensed professional civil engineer, not an architect. So I'm not going to look at your floor plans. I'm not going to look at your stairwells. Okay, I'm going to look at the gross aesthetics and their impact on the community and the use of the building. So it's our M, so you're going to put an apartment building in appropriate zone location. One of the, one of the first big sellers we had in Troy was called the box. Okay. okay. Four bedrooms, two and a half baths, square. I, I, it, there's nothing on the elevation. There's, it's not really an elevation. Okay. It needs this, I would say, if anything on the, all your plans and all the trees, just kill all the old trees and put new trees in and give a nice elevation for the street view. And I think um, that would be my only comment. Thank you. Okay, so I guess uh, we're going to have to get back. You're going to have to get with our planner. That's fine. And then we'll move forward. Um, thank you very much. Thank you. There is one person here with a public comment. If you wouldn't mind, I, if you wouldn't mind keeping it. Yeah, thank you very much, yeah. Mr. Brownski. If you wouldn't mind, um, state your name, your address, and if you wouldn't mind, please keep it brief. But we definitely want to hear from you. Sure. Tom D'Augustino, 175 Axford. I know I'm coming late to the party here. I get more questions than comments, I suspect. <clears throat> the cost of developing this development like that is substantially higher than the cost of building bricks. Tom, that's, that's not, I'm sorry, yeah. that's not an accurate photo? But I understand that, Ken. Okay. No, I understand. But I know that the cost, and it gets to what I'm, my principal concerns. I understand this will be another development in close proximity to the development at the old high school there. 129 units, we got a lot of density coming in. My principal concern is who's coming here to live. So I'd like to know from the developer what is the rent gonna be charged for these units? What is the maximum occupancy of people over the age of 16 who will be driving? So we know what the real parking will be. Uh, we've already got tremendous parking problems here and over there with a the new development. Uh, I know there's concerns about that parking too. So those are my principal questions. I know the developer is here, so I'm wondering if I can get answers to those. Right. Don't think we can give you those answers. I know you can, but the owner is here, the developer is here. I mean, when you build one of these things, you get to the point where you got an architect, you're looking at materials and all of that. If you haven't determined what you're going to rent your units at in order to make sure it cash flows for you or your investors, then you shouldn't be here. So I know you can't tell me that, but it's a question I have of the developer who's here. Okay. Well, this isn't actually a question and answer period. It's public comments. Um, so take your comments and if we can get you an answer, we will. So I, I'll, I'll wait to hear from somebody then on the answer to those questions. We'll get an answer. Uh, is there a reason we can't ask the owner to come up and just tell us? You could. I'd if, like to do if, that. If he will. I'm sorry. Mr. Reard? Oh, yeah, he can't participate in the vote. Can't participate. He, can't he can't participate in the vote, but he can no, certainly talk to the developer. If he chooses not to, that tells me a lot, and I appreciate that. But that's my principal concern. I'm concerned about what this rental is going to be, who's coming in to live here. If we've got a brick facade unit, that's one thing. If we got this, it's uh, going to be substantially more expensive. Uh, I, again, I know I'm late to the party here, but I don't think anything's been approved yet. And so those issues should be considered in the process, aside from the unwillingness to do some things and the inability to do others and the indecision about some. Uh, this is obviously something that's important to the community, and you guys are our eyes and ears and representatives of the community. And uh, we are blowing up here, as you know, and now we've got another development for apartments down the road at the old lumber yard. So, Who's coming into our community? Are they going to be contributing to the community? Are they going to create problems for the community? 
All that's important in addition to just the layout and the design and the facade. Fair thank, thank you. And we do appreciate your comments. And that is why we're all here. Right. Because we're all community members and we're looking at what's best for our community. I'm a little disappointed so. in, in the developer not willing to talk about that. All right. Thank you. All right. With that, so we have no uh, action item. So we will move on to uh, item 8A, uh, setting a public hearing for the master plan amendment, future land use map and zoning plan. So I guess we set this for the next meeting. Is there a uh, recommended motion uh, for our next meeting, which is scheduled for February 7th? I'd like to make a motion to set the public hearing on Monday, February 7th, 22, with the regular planning commission meeting on the 2021 master plan amendment, future land use map and zoning plan at 7.30 p.m. to be held at the Lake Orion Council Chambers located at 21 East Church Street, Lake Orion, Michigan, and to publish a notice in a newspaper of general circulation not less than 15 days prior to the hearing and distribute the public notice to each entity receiving a notice of intent to plan. Second. Move by second. Yes. Question. This question, Joe. When will the last opportunity to change the proposed master plan and map be? Well, is it too this late is just a public any, hearing. It's yes. just a public hearing. So is it too late to make any changes no, to the master plan? No, you can change it. We're going to recommend it to the council. The council has to approve it as well. I understand. So, so there's many number have, of opportunities. So if anybody to wants to make any modifications or changes, they have yes. one just until this public hearing or after the public hearing? At any time. Prior to. At any time. Prior to what? I'm looking for my dead stop. When is the last time that we'll get an opportunity to make any changes? When the second reading and consideration of adoption takes place at the village council level. Okay. That's the that's the, the final the time you final can make changes. Final reading at the village council level. Right. Otherwise, the master. Right, and they're they're likely to have a public hearing also. Mm -hmm. So there'll be a planning commission public hearing and a village council public hearing, and then the following meeting would be the earliest they would normally consider adopting, but they could change it at any point up to those. Okay. At so any time. It. So at least two months to finish editing. Yeah. We got yes. two months. Yes. Maybe two months. To And Sue, so before we actually vote on this, should we, do we need to no. uh, bring Commissioner Reard back in? No. I'm, I'm sorry. Do, do we, uh, we recused him from the last agenda well, item. He's do we, fine, he's, he's fine just coming back yes. in. Okay, yep. no, if we need to. Yep. Um, okay, so it's moved, seconded uh, for February 7th, the next uh, Planning Commission meeting. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, motion carries. Uh, move on to 8B. Uh, this is the Lake Orion Lumberyard Redevelopment Concept Plan. Um, and before we have you come up, Sue, did you have a I have one, uh, I'll comment here that one comment that needs to be addressed first, please? Uh, this is also from Corey Johnston. Uh, this, he says about Lake Orion Lumberyard Redevelopment Concept. This was presented at the December 6, 2021 meeting, but no action taken. The meeting information only had an aerial picture of the existing site with no other information on what was being proposed. A proposal for new apartment buildings was presented at the meeting. To the best of my knowledge, there has been no public hearing or other opportunity for public comment on this proposal. This site is currently zoned MU mixed use with DC downtown commercial to the north, RM to the east, PUD commercial and multifamily residential to the south and mixed use to the west. The concept as presented is only RM, has extensive paving and parking and seemingly no difference or coordination with the adjacent uses and master plan mixed use commercial live work or any more creative use of the property would be a better fit and more in keeping with the established plans of the village. As a resident at Atwater and Broadway, what is the proposed, sorry, 
at William Broadway. What is proposed will also cause traffic and pedestrian problems on both Atwater and Broadway, which already has issues due to vehicular movement and the pedestrian traffic on the Payne Creek Trail. While I fully understand the desire to have this property develop and hope it is, I think it would be far better to have something better integrated into the community character and intended use as the gateway to downtown village of Lake Orion. Corey Johnston. All right. Thank you. Uh, again, this is discussion and feedback. Uh, so let's listen to the planner or the uh, developer. I'm sorry. This is the first. Hold one right there. Okay, this is the first one. This is. Oh, this is this is the first one. There's a second. Okay. Great. Hi everyone. How are you tonight? Hi. Thanks for having me. Uh, John McGraw, River Caddis Development. Um, I am from East Lansing, Michigan. Uh, not um, a local by any means, but still um, from Michigan um, and still very excited about uh, the potential of, of becoming uh, a good neighbor here in Lake Orion. Um, the last meeting we had, uh, we discussed some of the issues that um, were or, or concerns that uh, were had with our plan. Um, now, I had uh, December, uh, a shorter month, even though it's, it's not really a shorter month, uh, but it's harder to get things um, done during that month. Um, but we, we had a lot of reflection during this time about what, what can be done um, on this site. We heard some of the, the concerns, parking, uh, amount of units or density, um, lack of parking or not enough parking, I guess I should say, uh, no commercial and it was single use uh, for, for market rate multifamily. Uh, so we took, uh, we took our plan back and, and what you see in this drawing right here is, is our plan from December 3rd. Um, I, I've got two plans in front of me. One is uh, 127 units yep. and one has 117 units. What should I be looking at? The one that I'm talking about right now is 117 units from December 3rd. I'll get to, you know, I mean, to be honest, both these plans, uh, the reason why it's, uh, I wanted to do another work session is to take a look at both. This isn't me coming in saying it's one or the other, it's saying how, how can we look at these together and, and work through it. Um, and, and for me to address some of the concerns, parking, units, density, uh, retail, all those other different things that, that we think that we can, but it still has to be, you know, a work session and I still want to provide and be a compliment to not just the downtown but the neighbors uh, provide uh, you know lack of a better term butts and seats for restaurants downtown uh, maybe create uh, some some synergies with some more retail so in this plan the, the 117 unit plan from December 3rd uh, we had uh, building number two right here which was described as a um, a clubhouse of sorts. So it had uh, a leasing area, a fitness room, a gathering area, maybe a kitchen, um, a dedicated uh, resident area, I would say. And it also had a pool, um, relaxing area, courtyard, um, with uh, outdoor amenities, essentially. So what we have changed this to, um, which this is single story, from this plan to our other plan is essentially created a three-story plan here where building two is now three stories uh, and we've introduced retail. So all, we'll have all storefront along Broadway and 24 uh, where we have an integration of a smaller leasing area, maybe first and second floor with, uh, with uh, uh, fitness, and it's the same type of amenities essentially as before except for we're, we're reducing the size and introducing some uh, commercial into this plan. Uh, we realize that, well, I mean, commercial is, just, commercial is a tough one here because it's really hard to put commercial behind the main area uh, along the creek because it's not visible. And I don't have a lot of frontage, as you can see, 
on 24, and everything else is behind Leah's or the, the uh, restaurant space along 24. So trying to come up with a plan that, that makes sense that we can lease and that people want to lease and can make money at and be visible and all of that leaves me to a, a little bit smaller of an area unless we get rid of the ingress egress right at that right at that corner which then leaves me with another issue of, of how to um, move these people about. So as you're starting to see kind of my conundrum of issues with an oddly shaped site uh, uh, then you start talking about the contamination of the site. Um, and just over time, what it's been, what it used to be, uh, for whatever reason, these, uh, this site has uh, some contamination that we have to deal with. And it's not just, if it's not me, if, if you guys decide that it's not me who should develop this because the site plan that I come up with is not complementary to, to this area, again, I don't want to be the, the square peg in this relationship. I'd like to fit in well and, and really provide a benefit for people to live uh, and, and visit your downtown uh, on a daily basis. But there's a lot of environmental issues that we're going to have to work through. And no matter who builds on the site has to go through it. And with regulations increasing and price increasing, we're, we have more and more issues to solve, and they add up every day. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I almost feel silly coming back with a relatively same plan that, that looks very similar, uh, especially in 2D. Um, but I, I have some limitations. Uh, when we show 117 units versus 127 units, I mean, really what we're trying to say is we're, we're somewhere in between there. You know, 120 units is a magic number for a management on site, which saves me uh, a good deal of money without bringing in uh, somebody from, uh, <clears throat> from outside that, that uh, has complementary use uh, from an adjacent site that they're managing. Um, but I have to figure out a way to create efficiencies within this plan to then pay back over time the contamination through, through Brownfield. We've already worked with the county on a plan for, for Brownfield only. Uh, we believe that uh, we have a strong plan to work with the county on this that will, we've minimized that to 15 years, which is, um, it's very short for our first blush. Um, we've done, we did one in uh, Midland, Michigan. That was a headquarter space and it was uh, 9 million um, in Brownfield, and it was 27 year capture period. And we, uh, after that was approved, we ended up at 6 million through value engineering, and we paid that off in six years. So we, we estimate for worst case scenario, but then we try to beat it through the process because it, it doesn't do us any good to, to uh, basically pay those taxes and then have them reimbursed over time and carry that, carry that front load. So the overall, what I'd really like to turn this into more, instead of me just talking at you folks, um, I, I'm hearing the density, I'm hearing the retail. I'd love to turn this into a mixed use, have some uh, commercial on uh, Broadway and 24. How can we work together on the, the density and how can we work together on the parking? Um, I have a unique mix of units comparatively, uh, I believe, in terms of um, Lake Orion. So we're, we're focusing on only juniors, uh, and, and it's just a term size of, which is not quite a studio. It's bigger than a studio. Juniors, one bedrooms, and two bedrooms. And we're gonna, the demographic that we're focusing on is more leaning towards one car per unit. So, we truly believe that one and a half stalls per unit is more than enough. And, and we have to prove that because if I don't have enough parking, then it's going to be hard to lease. If I have too much parking, then it's a sea of parking and it's all concrete. And then we get an email saying it has too much concrete. So I'd really like to break that up with bioswales, uh, uh, landscape features, tie that into a, a nice uh, entryway for, for the park system. And, and, and again, back to just working with you folks on this. I, I really want to be a partner on how this looks going forward. I don't want to be a 
someone who's coming in you, and, and just telling you what it is. But I do have some limitations, and I hope you do understand that. So how do we work on this together? What are some of these? I know the pain points are still the same, but I'm, I'm hoping that at some point that you're going to realize, too, that there are some limitations to this site, physically tangible uh, issues that we have to deal with. And if, if it's not today, it's, it's at some point with somebody else later on in the future, and costs will be higher at that point. So if, if at all possible, I'd love to open this up and find out what I can do to get to the next uh, uh, planning commission meeting next month and have a more sustainable full plan that addresses all the issues and we, we find some happy medium where we um, create this development together rather than just one side. Okay. Thank you, Mr. McGraw. Um, I think you had a sample from a resident who is asking questions and yeah. that's what you're going to kind of see. We appreciate you wanting to work with us and I'm sure you'll get some feedback from all of us as we glance at this. But again, we're all residents here. We live in the community. We're here to help the community. So we appreciate you coming and saying, what do you guys think? Um, and I think that's a great first step. Um, I know there was some social media that was put out um, today about this is not a public hearing. So we don't, you can hear from the commissioners, um, but we won't be talking to the public today. Um, any commissioners like to? Um, I think you may be, now that you're turning this into a retail, you're going to be forced to have a certain amount of parking spaces just for this unit. Mm -hmm. Okay, because you're not covered by, you're not in the downtown district, you're outside of it. So you don't get the, to have a commercial without parking. Yep. So um, that's one, one problem I, I see. Um, the other problems are, I'm not sure what the setbacks are on the MUs. On the multiple residential, they do have 25 foot on all four sides, but the MU may not, I don't know. <laughs> um, so, um, you know, I love the idea. I want something done with it, of course. Um, I know the brothers. I know they they excited to uh, to go on another step of their, their lives. Um, I just see, also, I'm not in the MU, is there a maximum height on MU, in the MU? Because I know in the Malta Residential, the maximum height is 40 feet. Mm -hmm. I mean, to the very top, you can elevator shaft or whatever, but, so um, I just want to make sure that you're, you're sure about some of these things. Um, I mean, I think you can get out of the 25 foot setbacks, I don't think that there's going to be a lot of problems with a lot of these areas because of what they back up to. But I'm just uh, recommending that you look into some of those items. But the biggest thing is, is this was better, better off as a community center for your apartments than now making it uh, commercial because then you have to provide, uh, I don't know, what's your parking spaces? One for every 350 square feet. Yeah, so I have another six, uh, about five to seven spots that I'm going to have to add for 2,000 to 2,500. Right. How do you pronounce your last name? Reared. Reared? Reared, the G-H is silent. Oh, okay. Um, thank you for the comments. Um, when, when also, and these are very helpful, uh, when we get to our full plan two, we're going to have to obviously iron out um, how, how high we can go, how we're planning that. I mean, we're, we're assuming it's, it's four stories, um, but we do understand the, the, the setbacks. Um, and, and do you know how far Leo's is? I saw it today. It looks uh, between 10 and 20 feet. Yeah, 10, 10 is the minimum. Okay. 25 so, is the maximum. So we, we would work with, with setbacks and, you know, we'd be mainly concerned with, uh, with safety along, because it's, I mean, look where you're, but you, you also have some areas where that bumps out pretty hard. Right, no, and, I and know. And so you would have some there, but you, if I'm looking at the retail closer away from, right. you know, that, I'm kind of looking at like a patio around that area with, with well, bars, but safety is the main concern and then, and then hit the... Well, like I say, thing, I don't so. think there's a big problem with that. I'm just saying it's something yeah. that you're going to have to be asking for additionally, you know, yeah. kind of as a variance. Um, and I do think that I still believe you'd be better off to maybe put a few more two bedrooms in and uh, reduce your total number of, uh, of apartments because the, the 
that minimum that you're doing on the parking is going to be a sticky issue. Okay. Yeah, so we're, we're basing our, um, our unit mix heavily off of a market study that we'll be then using for financing. And I, as you know, you, you go through that and yeah, I, you, you could introduce that, um, but, but we believe uh, where, where it's going right now, you know, as you know too, the, it's gonna cost me more uh, for those smaller units, essentially per unit. Um, so it is a sticking point, uh, I, I understand, and, and it's something I think that we need to work through. Uh, a lot of, whether it's suburban um, or, or other, uh, we're, we're really, I mean, 1.5 stalls is, is very universal. I mean, I understand that uh, we want to, uh, but I also don't want to, you know, you don't want to be left with a big parking lot. You want it to be, to fit in with the, and, and I, I don't think, I think it harms me if I have too much parking, and I think it definitely harms me if I don't have enough. And I think that 1.5 is a good sticking yeah, point. You, you won't have too much parking just because of where you're sitting right there and there's no place else for anybody to go. You're not like, well, I guess you go across the street and they could park in CVS or something, but basically there's no room to go. That's a problem. Yeah. And it's going to be end up being a management thing as well, so we'll, we'll work through that. Thank you for, for your comments. Okay. Who, who, do you, who do you see living here? What do you see the rents looking like? Who are you trying to attract to this property? Uh, well, you know, rents, we're looking at market rate rents, right? And those, those will fluctuate. We have estimates of what they are today. Um, but the target audience, I guess you could say, for, for this project it is an eclectic group, right? You have, you have downsizers, you have single parents, you have, uh, um, you have uh, um, young professionals, uh, you have um, people looking, uh, or empty nesters. You know, you, you guys have this, um, this amenity that not many places in, in Michigan or even all across the country have. You have a very unique downtown with a very unique set of uh, uh, stores and shops and unique events and a unique feeling. And I felt it the first time I was here. And so you're gonna get people from the ages of 25 to 55 and they're going to want to live here. They're gonna to wanna to travel from here because they want, they're gonna to wanna to call this home. And so you, you, you want people that, it's not quite blue zone folks, people that are looking to be closer to things, but they can walk, they can be active throughout the year. And I know it's still Michigan and day like today, I think it was two this morning when I woke up, uh, two degrees, it was horrible. But you're still gonna get people that wanna walk outside and they have all of these amenities downtown. And so our, our immediate target audience is really that age 25 to, to 55, and then even shorter than that, um, like a, a 32 to, to 43. What, what kind of income do they have to make to be able to afford to live in this property? Um, well, do they have to make? Um, so I, mean, I, I would say when, you, when we what's judge... What's the minimum someone needs to make to be able to afford to live in this property? Well, it's not for me to tell, give them financial advice, but if we're... we're probably modeling this, we won't get the same rents as your most recently built downtown apartment, but they're probably close. And that's judged by the market. That's not judged by me. So we take that and then we measure that up against current costs, and then that's where we come from. So I'm not doing something that hasn't been done. I'm just simply market rate. And it'll probably, I probably won't be able to get the rents that are at 120 Broadway, I believe at 102 or 105. Can't remember right off the top of my head. But um, so, they'd probably be less than that, so they wouldn't be highest in the market by by any stretch of the imagination. Did I hear you say you would have a manager on a property? Yes, I would. Along Mr. Morant's question, what percentage? of the demographics or the people that will occupy will be at the lower flexible rate 
compared to the higher flexible rate. Um, my understanding is, are not most of your units going to be single bedroom? The, the majority. I, I haven't of them. narrowed down the exact unit mix. Okay. okay. So what what so we do have is juniors. Point. We have we have juniors which are bigger than a studio. Yeah. Then we have. Uh, one bedrooms and then two bedrooms. Now, I haven't narrowed down exactly what that number is, honestly, because I don't, <laughs> from the last meeting, I don't know uh, how many units you guys will uh, approve, and okay. then if I can go anywhere from that. So, What's, I, what's the acreage again, sir? I, I think it's roughly 4.69, which is more than what it was. So if we're looking at a 50% before the 20%. So at 4.7 for sake of easier math, correct? At uh, currently a PUD would offer 15 and then a possibility of a 50% gain on 15, which would be 22 per acre. 4.7, that'd be what, 88, uh, 98, 103 roughly? Yeah, 100, you know, my math was 106, but. Yeah, because the one thing I, and I mentioned it the last time you came before us, Mr. Graw, is that with the uh, Eman Center public hearing, uh, everybody said density. Everybody since that meeting that I've talked to has mentioned density as being a major concern. Not really the project as much as density, whether they're against it or for it, it's always been density has been a comment in there. And um, similar to uh, earlier comment, um, by Mr. D'Agostino about who are these people, who will they be, who's going to come join our community, and um, where will we go? And without knowing some of those answers, like what your demographic target is, uh, what uh, I, I, the Mr. possibilities I, are, I'm not sure how I can help. Well, well today is about land use. We want to talk about the, the land use okay. and, and what we're focused on. And, and really, I can't steer who lives here. Nobody can. But you and can so what, what we're targeting is a certain age group of people, but that, I mean, that doesn't mean that that's who's going to live here. Okay, well, that'll be another conversation possibly, like um, what that target is, because you haven't been able to provide any of that data. Pa you, pardon me? What that target is. The people, what's your demographic target? We, we, you haven't been able to provide that. It's just been a general, um, uh, you know, uh, 25 to 55 years of age. Yeah, and so when I say 25 to 55, you're, you're going to get obviously a range of folks, um, but you have single parents. You have, you know, it's the same thing I, I mentioned a few minutes ago. You have the, um, the, the empty nesters. You have... Uh, um, uh, young professionals, you have folks that are going to want to live next to amenities that, that don't have to get out and drive, that don't have to go places, that get to visit and walk and be active. Um, and so this promotes healthier lifestyles, this promotes uh, more active and, and synergistic downtowns, this promotes uh, more events downtown, it promotes more of a buzz, it promotes more of an energy. and. And, and really, all of these things are things that, are, that we're, I hear you guys say that we want to do. Um, we have a tremendous amount of money involved, invested in that. It's called our DDA that promotes all that, that really works hard for us to gain that. The events, the uh, promotion of our community, mm, yep. uh, we've got a lot of traction in the area. But let me, let me ask a couple of questions, possibly. Um, when you say it's more about land use tonight, is what we're kind of talking about, then some of the comments and the things that I hear is it's a gateway. It needs to be something that has appeal, um, just not some more boxes, if that's helpful. And, and I, I look at you, I'm not an architect. I look at you as a developer with experience to try to find that gateway appeal. But gateway is one thing that's mentioned. And then um, uh, traffic is mentioned as well. And when I look at this, when we talk about land use, I'm not sure how uh, MDOT will even uh, 
what their approach or opinions will be about ingress and egress. Mm -hmm. Do we know any of that? Uh, we have one entrance on M24 and one off of Broadway, and that's it for a fairly good-sized development. Right? Yeah. I'm sorry, off of Atwater, excuse me. So we would, uh, so once we get into the, uh, the next step, as in uh, city council in, in more detailed drawings where we're all kind of uh, running on the same opinion of, of the next steps, we, we would definitely pull a traffic study, an impact study of how this, how this all plays out. You know, what does 24 look like? What does Atwater look like? You know, are the stacking spots there adequate? Um, you know, at the end of the day, we're trying to create a nice bookend uh, to the downtown, which I would consider a, a gateway. All so. right. Then my, my only comments I could probably give you tonight then would be less density, more parking. Okay. Thank you, Ken. Yep. Mr. Lamb. You know, that those, I've only been on council and the planning commission for one year and for such a sleepy little community. I live in a small rural community that happens to have a modest sized lake in the middle of it. And I realize I really enjoy the small rural community with the little cute downtown. What I don't admire is the huge water bills and the poorly maintained streets and the lack of revenue in the village. So as I sit here with you, there's two previous projects at 141 Elizabeth Street that I had voted for with a higher density, but they didn't ask for a higher density. Then there was a, another project with the old school building that everybody cried and, and moaned over, and I, I actually voted for a higher density. And I realized that our PUD ordinance is strictly a higher density ordinance. You know. So you, know, you guys are entitled to 70 point five units if that's the proper acreage according to our zoning ordinance. We have an ordinance called PUD ordinance that says you can get up to a 50% increase if you have all these qualifying criteria, okay? As far as I can tell, half the ordinances in this, in this village are very lightly written, which means they don't have a lot of depth and they don't have a lot of intention because it's a very simple little community. So, you know, to get a 50% bonus in density, you have to show something exceptional, I would think. The last two projects, the first one, I kind of, it's a little apartment, you know, 20 units off a of side street, no big deal. The next one is a major building in the middle of town that everyone's concerned about. And, um, you know, they were going to get a cookie to take on the old building. So now this site, which everyone says is a main view and it's a gateway community, and all I'm seeing is just an apartment complex at the entrance to the town. I don't see any exceptional anything. I don't think um, right now that any contamination is even an issue with us. I mean, I don't, I don't care if it's contaminated or not. I don't own the property. The state doesn't own the property and the village doesn't. So it's not a concern to me as a member of this community as an as a elected official, I am only interested in what's good for my people and myself. So I'm not seeing any great impetus for, at this point with this plan, I just see an apartment complex. That's all I see. So it's, there's nothing exceptional. I can't really comment beyond that. It's, I'm looking for some reason to give you the things that you want, but I'm not seeing that reason based on what the laws I have to follow right here yet. If you can provide those, great. If you can't, we still got the zoning ordinance, you can calculate your development based on that. That's the bottom line is the zoning ordinance, and after that, you have to show us some, some merit other than, you know, you need so many units to make it um, profitable for your company, which is important. I know that it's very important. You're the developer. I get it. So we would be, I would be looking for a little more something you know something to give me a reason to you know promote that so. Do, Henry, any comments? when you uh, i'm going to be careful how i say it um when you say you'd like to see something exceptional 
do you have an idea in mind of how I can do that, or is there no defined I don't do exception? It. I don't do exception. Okay. I do the box. Like I said earlier in my comments, I, I build standard living units for standard people in standard communities. You know, so I don't really have that kind of, you know, I don't have that. It's just, I look at what you've got. That's all I can do is look at what you present. So. And this is 2D, and I understand that there, you know, the, I'm not building a square box. But, so. but you were asking for feedback. So you're, Correct. that's what you're getting. That's and, fair. And if, if I can jump in, and yeah. I appreciate you're not from the community. Um, I am, and I can tell you, your traffic study, this is the first time I looked at this, it was a nightmare. Um, it, and the reason we're asking, like, what's your demographics, is not because we want to know exactly who you're bringing in. It's because if you have people who are going to stay here and live here, nine to five during work hours, pool's too small. Yeah, okay, there's a lake across the street, but there's a lake across the street. Then they need a boat slip, and then they need to get over to the uh, uh, park or, or whatever. If they're working professionals, you could just imagine 7 a.m. in the morning trying to make a heading west out of that uh, onto M24, making a left turn southbound, is gonna be damn near impossible. Um, I would say impossible. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, I would, okay, so take out the damn near and just call it impossible, especially if there's snow on the ground. It's just, we can look at this and see that's not gonna work. Um, there's, li there's things like that that we immediately look at and go, listen, we all want it to work. If it's gonna work, it's gotta work. Um, and that's one of the reasons that's being brought up. Parking, it's, a big deal around here. And so not having enough parking, you're going to have people who are not going to want to rent an apartment because they don't, don't park. And I get it. Uh, there's a lot of young professionals that don't have a car or don't have two or three cars. Mm -hmm. But there are young professionals that have 4.3 cars. Uh, you know, I mean, there's classic car guys. There's all, you know, you never know. Um, so that's the feedback that I think we were all trying to give here. Okay. I, I'm sorry, Mr. Okay. Re Commissioner Reard. I want to make one comment. First of all, I think that all of us would like to see this property developed. There's nothing you're going to develop here that isn't going to maybe create some sort of a, tra a, tra a traffic problem. I'm sure that there would not be a left turn out of there anyways. It's going to be a forced right turn, which allows them to go on down to uh, Broadway to Flint and come back around. So I don't see that being an issue. I will comment again about the parking. I do think the parking is an issue. I think our standard of two parking spaces per unit is, is, is a fair thing. And as I said, to get around that, to me, build more two bedroom, maybe some three bedroom, you know, to, so you can make up that, that rent that you need to make to make this profitable for you. So I think the project is very possible but you're gonna to have to be a little bit more workable. And uh, I'm pretty sure this board would be glad to get something developed there than what is sitting there right now. Sure, I, and I think we all are in agreement of that. Um, but we have to give you some feedback and there you have it. And I appreciate it, I really do. Sure. All right, with that, we're gonna, do you have anything further, Mr. Rob? Um, no, I don't believe so, thank you. All right, thank you very Appreciate much. It. Thank you for your time. Um, with that, we will move on to uh, new business 8C. Uh, we actually have that uh, text amendment to, the, uh, pub, uh, to set for a public hearing. Does everybody have this? It was just handed to us at the beginning of the meeting. This is the proposed ordinance, uh, text amendments to the zoning ordinance section 20 for violations and penalties um, to set a, another public hearing. I need a motion. Okay. Mm, motion. Okay. I'd like to make a motion to set a public hearing for Monday, February 7th, 2022 at 7.30 p.m. Purpose of the public hearing is to grant a hearing to any person interested in the proposed text amendments to the Village of Lake Orion zoning ordinance. 
prior to the Planning Commission making its recommendation there on to the Lake Orion Village Council. I'll second that. Moved and supported. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. Uh, with that, move on to item nine, uh, commissioner's comments. Commissioner Van Portfleet. I'm good. Happy New Year. Let's go. All right. It's going to be a good year. Uh, happy New Year to everybody. Uh, the only comment I have is that we did make recommendations to council to get rid of the 20% out of the PUD ordinance, and I lobbied for the all the percentages out of the PUD ordinance. I'm still lobbying for that. But I was a little concerned at the last council meeting that, that perhaps we weren't going to get that passed um, because we didn't seem to have 100% support for that. So I, if you, you know, have any influence with your friends in the community, you want to put some pressure towards that, I wouldn't mind lobbying if that's appropriate to get the other council people in line with what we recommend. Right. So when you, one thing you got to remember, okay, is when we put the 15 units, it was would you say it was nine or 10 to 12 10 to 12 well 10 to 12 so if they want the 20 percent then i guess we can go back to the 10 to 12. you call one of your friends on council and, and talk to them I, i'd like to ask a question you say it has to have a hundred percent no i i just i didn't feel that it was really okay then let's just make sure that's clear yeah it no, doesn't I, require a hundred percent it's a majority rule, right? As I, in all case, most my, cases. My, my comment during my time was, I didn't feel yes. that we had a hundred percent support, even though we only need a plurality. Is that the right word? So if majority. You, you know, if you want to reach out to anyone, I'd, I'd love to see that get passed all right. at the next council at the next council meeting. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it, Mr. Lawrence. Uh, Happy New Year, everybody, and um, it was interesting. I, was, I, I walk in the village a lot because I uh, live right across the street, and, you know, I look real hard at that driveway coming out because that's where I come out on the other side. Uh, but one of the things that I, I want to make sure that we do when we look at these apartments, because I see balconies on all of them, and I walk by the one apartment building right over on Lapeer Street, and, you know, it, their balconies are nice. They have nice couches out there. They have folding chairs that have been burned up. And, and it's really a mess. So looking forward, how do we take a look at making sure that the property owners are enforcing or have standards for what goes and can be on the balconies? Okay. That's it. Thank you. Ms. Sherwood? Joe? I did have one thing. We did receive uh, plans from the school district for the new Plant Sims Elementary School. They submitted them to us uh, for utility review. I did forward them a site plan application form. Uh, so I did check with McKenna and uh, as a state facility, they are not required to go, are not subject to local provisions, they're subject to state law provisions, and to the point that the building inspections will be done by the state, not by the township, who is our building inspector, and so I'm waiting to see um, if they're going to ask us for input on the site plan layout or not. I expect they would, but I haven't heard an answer back yet, but I just want to let you know, we do have in case you want to look at them. Uh, they're here, and then we'll get an answer and response back from the school as to uh, having a review. Okay. Thank you. Happy New Year to Happy New Year to everyone. Uh, I, I'd report. like to I'd like to inquire about that. What you just indicated is that it's state law for construction code. Did I understand that correctly? Yes. I would like to have a definitive response as far as uh, not a a verbal. I'd like to have a written response as to what our role, if any, is in the uh, ordinances and the planning and zoning. Right. Because I know there's a lot of questions over there, all the way from uh, infrastructure to um, what they're going to build. And, and don't get me wrong, I just want to know instead of uh, from a written response, as opposed to what sure. we think we know. Sure. Thank you. All right, thank you. Next planning commission meeting will be Monday, February 7th with two 
uh, public hearings. Uh, move to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second. Favor? Aye. 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 All right. Meeting adjourned.